friction. We know that friction acts to oppose motion. Or for that sense, keep a object from moving. The force of friction is directly proportional to the normal force between the two surfaces. So that we know our force of friction, therefore, is proportional to our normal force. Therefore, the force of friction, Ff, is equal to mu Fn, mu being our coefficient of friction, Fn being simply equal to mass times gravity. And we know there's two types of friction. The first type of friction being our static friction, which are when our objects are at rest. We use static friction to describe the maximum frictional force needed to just get an object starting to move. So to just to get that object moving, that is our static friction. Our second type of friction is our kinetic friction. Occurs when our object is moving and of course it opposes the direction of motion. Okay. And just remember, although I'm sure that you do know it. Remember that depending on whether the object is moving or at rest, we use the appropriate coefficient of friction. That being either mu s or mu k for kinetic friction. And this is the Greek letter mu. Easy enough friction. Let's see a couple fairly straightforward examples right now. My first one that I have for you guys is a horizontal force of 40 newtons being required to pull a 6.5 kilogram object or block across a desk at a uniform velocity. Let us calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction. I have my block. Keeping that block on the uh, desk is my force of gravity opposing my gravitational force at an equal but opposite magnitude is my normal force. This is traveling at uniform velocity. So that means my applied force of 40 newtons will be exactly the same 
as the frictional force opposing it, which in this case will also be the 40 newtons. So quite easy from this since we have no acceleration occurring here, acceleration is zero, so our forces must all be balanced out. We know that my force of uh, friction must be equal to mu Fn. In this case, we're calculating the force of kinetic friction, so this should actually say Fk. So Fk is mu k mg. My apologies, I'll move this down. Sorry about that. So to solve for mu k, let's divide by mg. So that will be 40 over our mass of 6.5 times 9.81 will give me my coefficient of kinetic friction, which is 0 0.6 is mu k. So my coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.6. Fairly straightforward example, but good to review anyways. My second example that I have for you. A man pulls a 50 kilogram crate across a level floor with a horizontal force of 200 newtons. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.3. Let us determine the acceleration of the crate. A 50 kilogram crate in this case with an applied force of 200 newtons and a force of friction acting in the opposite direction, in this case kinetic friction, which is mu k f n, or 0 0.3 is my coefficient of kinetic friction, times 50 times 9.81. So by force of kinetic friction, in this case, we must calculate. which is 147.15. I do have the normal force and gravitational force acting in um, opposite directions equal in magnitude. So let's determine the acceleration of this crate. My net force, which is the sum of the forces acting on the object, will be my applied force minus the force of kinetic friction. And all of that due to Newton's second law is mass times acceleration. We need to solve for acceleration, so let's divide both sides of the equation by m to cancel out my m's on the right hand side. Therefore acceleration is merely fk minus fk, sorry fa minus fk over m. So 200, subtract 147.15, all over 50. And we get an acceleration of 53 meters per second squared. Looking at my initial question, one significant digit, therefore the acceleration is 50 meters per second squared. And that's all there is for this video for today.